What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Hart, for those of you that are new. And today, I'll be breaking down this five-game NBA slate here on DraftKings for Saturday night. I'll be talking through kind of my favorite plays, value plays, how to attack the slate, and doing a game-by-game -game breakdown, as well as a potential early look build here for you guys. So make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. If you want a more in-depth breakdown, uh, a slate right up, I'll have that on my Patreon link down below where I talk through how to attack this you know, slate based on the injury news we, have, we get throughout the day, as well as my updated core plays will be on that. So make sure to check that out, link down below. And let's get right into this video. So for tonight, my core plays were Darius Garland, uh, Cole Anthony, Cade Cunningham, and then Isaiah Quickly, um, and then DiVincenzo. So uh, in my... I don't know how much DiVincenzo got. I think he had a, a decent game. Uh, but Cole Anthony did a little bit better there. But I said my Patreon. Those were the four guys. And then I was up in the air between DiVincenzo and Anthony. And I ended up switching to Anthony just because the Magic ruled out Suggs. And they were pretty shorthanded for the guards. But yeah, Darius Garland, very disappointing there. I mean, 28 points is great, but did nothing peripheral stat-wise. Uh, so 34 at 45% ownership. That did not do too much there. So right now I'm cashing. But I think I'll probably fall out of cash and probably miss by five points on all simply due to um, Karis LeVert there, who absolutely screwed me. But Cole Anthony was great there, 33, 15% ownership. He shot 3 of 12, though. He played like 38 minutes, so that's pretty frustrating. You know, close to triple-double, but it would have been nice if he could hit his shots. Karis LeVert, I'm really surprised he wasn't coming in higher owned. I mean, Donovan Mitchell got ruled out, so we know the big main three of LeVert, Struess, and Garland were all very, very good plays, and he only came in at 15% ownership, and of course... Had his worst game of the season there, so that's super frustrating. That's going to be the reason why I won't cash. Jalen Johnson did great for me. Double-double there, 1% ownership, 43. Okongwu, I, I kind of wanted you guys to see for more of a mid-range build, um, and Okongwu really screwed me there. I think that was his worst game of the season. So I know I said a lot, and it's been pretty much true. I mean, that was his worst game of the season there for Okongwu. So, of course, classic. Cape Cunningham, um, <clears throat> once again, smash bot here. Uh, but still, he can't get over 40 fancy points right now. It's very, very annoying. Struis was fantastic there. Surprised he wasn't more owned. I mean, Donovan Mitchell got ruled out, and they're playing Detroit. I don't know why people didn't get to more of these Cavs guys. And then quickly there was fantastic. 14% uh, owned, 43 uh, bomb there. Uh, so, yeah, I, I was you know I hit on pretty much all the core plays. It's just my other guys did not step up. Just had some bad nights. But not much you can do. That is fantasy for you guys. So, hopping into this five-game slate here, as we can see, we have the Knicks and Hornets um, is not on the slate. Sorry about that. Let's kind of scroll past that. So we get the Timberwolves and Pelicans, four and a half point spread. Obviously, there's no game totals right now. Some of these teams are still playing. Uh, Heat, Bulls, three point spread. Mavs, inbox, two and a half point spread. So we're missing two games and obviously the game totals. But I'll fill that in in my Patreon link down below later tomorrow. Uh, hopping into this first game here, Minnesota versus the Pelicans. Minnesota did not play today. Uh, the Pelicans did. So they're on a back-to-back. -back. Minnesota's not. But fantastic price here for Anthony Edwards. I mean, we know what it, we're getting from Anthony Edwards. He should shoot the ball close to 20 times. Coming off of two very poor shooting games, 7-16, 4-16. Uh, really, really like him at this price tag at 8.7K in this matchup. So I'm going to throw him in the lineup for now. Uh, I really like the you know the price of Towns. He he absolutely screwed me that one game there. Uh, had his worst game of the season, 21 fancy points. But, you know, he's kind of stepped up since then. A 48 bomb, a 51, 55, 36. So... One of those guys can, you know, get in foul trouble at times. Uh, you know, it's going to be a little tough for him guarding Zion. But still, massive upside. He's shooting the ball a ton right now. 20-plus uh, pretty much in three out of the past four. So, really like him. Uh, Gobert is just one of those, you know, fine contrarian plays if you land on him in the mid-range. You know, he does have some upside. Uh, but you never want to go out of your way to play him. Conley, he's just kind of there. You know, gonna should see close to 30 minutes. He's been, you know, pretty steady. So, if you want a steady play, he's your guy. Nas Reed, kind of a GPP play off the bench, you know, should play anywhere from like 15 to 25 minutes, depending on how he's doing. If there's foul trouble with like Cat or Gobert or something like that, you know, Nas Reed will obviously will get more minutes. So that's kind of your option there. Uh, Kyle Anderson's not really been in play this year. The minutes have been okay, but it's just one of those things, you know, not super involved in the offense. Uh, just kind of a kind of a lower tier value play that, you know, is kind of down there. Don't have much interest in him. McDaniels uh, should be good to go here. Played 23 minutes in that last game. You know, the minutes are all over the place with him, but he should probably play, I'd say, 30 minutes around that mark. Uh, I think he's an okay value play there at that price tag. And that's really, it's not a ton of interest in the value. For the Pelicans here, obviously coming off a of back-to-back, but still, Brandon Ingram looks really, really solid here. 
I still rather get to Zion, who got off to a fantastic start. I think he had 15 points in the first quarter, but he only finished with like 26 for the game. Uh, hasn't been not has not been rebounding the ball the best this season. Only like six and a half per game. I uh, would like that to bump up a little bit more, especially since you know Jay Val has pretty much been seeing only like low 20s minutes. But still, I like both of them uh, a decent amount. But right now, I think they're more you know secondary options for me. CJ is still out. Jay Val. He saw 34 minutes tonight. So I said, if you guys think you, they're probably going to need him to play more minutes guarding Jokic, uh, he stayed out of foul trouble and he played like 34 minutes and actually had a pretty solid game. But we're playing Minnesota now. I mean, you could say the same thing. You know, Cat has size. Gobert has size. Uh, but it's one of those things with the Pelicans, you never know. So there is risk here, but I do have a good amount of interest in J-Val. Maybe we can get two back-to-back games where he goes over 30 minutes. That'd be fantastic. And that price would definitely be way too cheap there for a guy who can absolutely nuke the slate. Herb Jones at 6K. Don't love that. Uh, even with, you know, CJ out, he's had some explosion games, but still, uh, you really need him to do well stealing the ball wise. And he has the past few games. I don't know what he did today. I don't think he did the best. So he's just more of an okay play there. Hawkins is coming off the bench. That's way too expensive for a guy who's coming off the bench. Dyson Nittles did get the start. He had a really, really solid game tonight. So uh, if he's going to start a point guard once again, I do think this is a little bit too cheap here. He's not going to be super aggressive at all, but he's really good at getting the peripheral stats like rebounding and assists and can get some steals and blocks. So, I, I do think he's definitely a little bit too cheap there at the price tag. Not by a ton, but definitely a little bit too cheap. And that is it. You know, I will mention Marshall. Uh, he played 21 minutes that last game. I think he played like 17 tonight, something around there. Uh, he's usually pretty aggressive off the bench. Uh, and yeah, so I, I do like him a lot there at value. And then Ryan was kind of the third guy off the bench there. So the bench guys were Hawkins, Marshall, and Ryan. Um, I think Marshall played, Hawkins and Marshall played the most minutes. I think Ryan played like 17 or 19, but. I don't have any interest in him, uh, but more so just kind of a uh, Najee Marshall for me. Moving on to Memphis here for the Memphis side. Uh, there was no Marcus Smart, so he's out for a few weeks. So we'll most likely get uh, Gilliard down here starting. He's starting a couple games. Does have some decent upside. Not going to be super aggressive, but you know, with Marcus Smart being rolled out, uh, I think it's one of those things we're going to lock in Gilliard there. It's a starting point guard. You know, Bain and Jackson Jr. should be shorter even more of the offensive load. It's not like you know Marcus Smart was doing t- a ton offensively, but still. These two guys look really, really good here in this matchup against the Spurs. Uh, Biombo looks fine here. You know, if Tillman is out, which uh, it should be out, yeah, he's out. I think Biombo's a pretty solid play there at 5.9K. You know, should hopefully see into the low to mid 30s. And he does have some upside there, double double upside, as you can see, if he stays out of foul trouble. So, good amount of interest in this Memphis team just because they're super short handed. You know, Santi should get a good amount of run off bench. Um, you know, when I played him, it was against Utah here. He saw his season low in minutes, 13, for no reason. Close game, 13 when I play him. And then, you know, obviously he has a 17 fancy point game and then drops a 40 bomb. But it's one of those things. He should be aggressive off the bench. The minutes aren't always secure, but 5,200, I think it's an okay play. Not the best play, but okay. Roddy should see some decent run off the bench. I think he's a fine value. Same thing as Zaire Williams. He should see, you know, mid-20s minutes off the bench. I think he's a fine value there as well. Um, so, yeah, I have a little bit of interest here in these kind of wings for the, the Memphis Grizzlies. And then D. Rose is questionable. Uh, if he's good to go, obviously it kind of knocks down the interest in Gilliard a little bit, uh, depending on if Rose is on a minutes limit or not. If there's a minutes limit, I just stick to Gilliard. If there's no minutes limit, then I do think you can definitely take a shot on D. Rose down there, who was productive at the beginning of the season when he did get some minutes there. So uh, keep an eye out on that. Uh, Conchar maybe cracks the rotation, plays about 15 minutes. Don't think you need to take a shot on him. And that is really it. For the Spurs side here, they played tonight as well. Victor, price about right. I mean, he's kind of your contrarian spin up option. Keldon Johnson, uh, I do have a good amount of interest in him if, you know, Trey Jones and Vassal will be out once again. Uh, so we had to keep an eye out on that because if that's the case, then tonight they started uh, Victor, Keldon, Zach, uh, Sohan, and then Champagne, whatever you want to call him. Um, and so I'd obviously have a good amount of interest in Kelton just because the offense will run through him. Zach Collins really stepped up offensively tonight. Uh, the, obviously, the box score has not loaded in yet, but tonight he really stepped up offensively, so I do have a good amount of interest in him. He's still at a decent price tag. Uh, Sohan, just not for me, even though he's running points. It's just uh, it's just not for me there. Uh, I don't think there's a need to get to him. Branham, he did not play a ton off the bench tonight, so I think he's a very risky play down there at 4,500. Champagne, uh, whatever you want to call him. I think it's a fine play, 4,300. You know, we'll shoot some shots. Said he's an okay value off the bench here. But yeah, not a ton of interest in these kind of, you know, value guys. And I don't think Devonta even cracked the rotation tonight. 
Not really getting minutes right now for the Spurs. On to Miami here for the Heat. Uh, Bam and Jimmy will lead this team. Um, it's a good matchup here against Chicago, who had 33, 33 points at half today against the Magic. Wild stuff. But yeah, offense will run through Jimmy and Bam. Uh, they look, both look really, really strong here. Jimmy had a great game last game for a 53 bomb. Uh, Duncan Robinson actually been very, very good the past three games here. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a very gross game here. Very slow pace between these two teams of the Heat and the Bulls. Um, so right now, not a lot of interest in the Miami for me. Uh, but if I was going to get to some guys, it'd probably be either Bam or Jimmy. And I'd still really like Kyle Lowry, even though he absolutely screwed me here at low ownership. T- play 24 minutes, did not play the last 19 minutes of the game. Uh, yeah, it was just, I, I don't know why they just did not play him. It, it was very frustrating stuff. So he is definitely risky, but still love the upside there. If you can see 30 plus minutes, Hawkes has been very, very solid off the bench there. Once again, saw 33 minutes. So kind of expect him to see 25 plus tomorrow. Richardson uh, played mid twenties. I think he's a fine play. Highsmith will start. He should see low twenties. Maybe he does a little bit more if he's hitting his shots and playing well defensively. I think he's an okay play. Caleb Martin's back. Uh, he played 12 minutes, so it looks like he's going to be on a minutes limit for now. So no interest in me for him. And then Kevin Love, they did sprinkle him in 16 minutes. He's productive, but one of those things, it's very hard to trust his minutes right now. So not a lot to love here for the Heat. It's pretty much just, you know, Jaime. If you want to take a shot on Lowry, I don't mind Duncan. He's been productive, uh, but I'd pretty much just kind of stay with one of the two main spin ups. For Chicago here, um, as I said, they only had 33 points, 33 points at halftime today. I, they got close to 100, but 33 points at halftime is absolutely egregious. That's wild stuff. But Vooch here, um, I think he's a fine play. I mean, he's had some upside recently. I think he's probably the safest of the, the big three here for the Bulls. Um, Neil Zach's pretty up and down. He actually had stepped up tonight, so I think he had a really, really solid night. I think he went for 45, maybe even a 50 bomb. Uh, DeMar has really been struggling. I uh, hit you know three solid games there in a row, but uh, I don't think he did the best tonight. Obviously, he had a 28 fantasy point game there against Milwaukee, so... I think Vooch is your safest. Zach probably has the highest ceiling, and DeMar is kind of stuck in between those two. So a little bit of interest right now in these three. It really just depends on ownership for me. Kobe's a fine mid-range play. I actually think he had a pretty solid night tonight as well. Caruso's there. Don't love the price tag, but he can have those random pop-off games. And then for the value, I don't mind if you land on, you know, Torrey Craig should see mid-20s minutes, but don't really love the value at all for the Bulls. It's really just kind of sticking with the main three, and that's it. For Dallas here, you know, Luke, Kyrie is back, so Luca. 12-2. If you feel fine with the value, I mean, you can definitely get up to him. He'll be pretty, pretty low owned just because there's not a, va- a lot of value right now. So it feels like you'd definitely be forcing value to try to get to him. But hey, that, that could work out. Kyrie, I think is a pretty solid contrarian spin-up option. I had a letdown game there against the Pelicans, but before that uh, was you know pretty solid. A 50 bomb, 30, 35 and a half, 44 and a half, and then a 58 bomb there. So it looks like he's kind of stepping up recently. So do like him a good amount as a contrarian spin-up play. With him back, you know, Tim Hardaway Jr. should shift down to kind of that, you know, 11 to 12 shot range. So uh, he looks like an okay play off the bench. Lively does have some upside if he can stay out of foul trouble. So I do have some interest in him a little bit. Derek Jones Jr., fine. Don't love the price on him. You know, Grant Williams has been struggling a lot recently, but I think it's still a pretty decent price tag to land on Grant Williams. They're going to need his defense, especially against Giannis. He always seems to step up. So I actually do have some interest in Grant Williams there. Uh, Josh Green is super chalk, and he went for eight and a half fancy points there that last game. Uh, you know, he'll, he'll move back to the bench with Kyrie back, so don't have any interest in him. Powell could be a decent dart throw just if you know, in case Lively does get in foul trouble. They're going to need his size against Brooke Lopez and Giannis. So I do think Powell is a little bit more viable today than he usually is. And that is really it. Yeah, I mean, they're struggling. They don't ha- they're not struggling, but they don't have a ton of, you know, bigs. And they're going to need them. They can't really go small ball against Brook Lopez and Giannis. So they're going to have to rely on Lively and Powell. So I do have some interest in those centers. For the Milwaukee side here, uh, they played tonight. Uh, Giannis kind of had like a very low triple-double almost. Uh, it was kind of the Damian Lillard show. I think they're both priced about right. If I had to land on one, it would probably be Giannis right now in this matchup here. Uh, Bobby Portis, a little bit too pricey for me. That's 6.7K. Not really sure why his price is up that much. But yeah, it's just way too high for me to get to him. He's out of contention for me. I think Brooke Lopez is still in play there. 5,900. Um, Middleton still on a minutes limit. Don't love that. Don't think he's in play for me. Beasley, yeah, not a lot of interest for me for the, the Milwaukee Bucks right now besides Giannis. Maybe Dame is a secondary option. 
Same with Brooke Lopez. I do think he's a decent secondary option. And I still have, you know, interesting uh, Pat Connaughton down here, 4,200 is like a value play. But yeah, not a lot to love there from Milwaukee. And then moving on to this last game here, a lot to like here. Uh, SGA looks like a great spin up at 10-5. Chet Holgram looks like a very strong mid-range play there. Has double-double upside. Obviously not shooting the ball a ton. Minutes haven't been great recently. There's some blowouts mixed in there, but if it's a close game, he should hopefully see 30 plus and does have some good upside. So I, I do like him. Giddy priced about right for me. Maybe a little bit too expensive. I'd rather pay down for a guy like Jalen Williams, who has similar upside, if not better upside. Uh, we'll shoot the ball better offensive player. Uh, so yeah, I'd rather get to Jalen Williams than Giddy. Giddy's going to be more so of like that contrarian play in the mid range. Lou Dort, kind of a GPP play. Don't love that. Kaysom Wallace had a pretty solid game from the last game off the bench. Has some decent value. Uh, he should see around 20 ish minutes. He can get you there, as you can see. Um, but yeah, I think he's an okay value play. Isaiah Joe had a great game shooting the ball there, as you can see. Seven for seven from three, 34 fancy points. I mean, that's the ceiling he can have if he hits his shots. Otherwise, you know, he should probably play around 15 minutes and be an okay value play at 3,800. You're really hoping for that ceiling game, which he got last game. So I'm not sure if he can do it two times in a row. And then Kendrick Williams. I think he'd probably be my favorite value play here for the Thunder just because he is one of those guys who's pretty productive. Like he'll go out there and kind of be like a point forward. He can get rebounds. He can get assists. He can score some points. So I do like Kendrick Williams here as a very cheap value play for this slate today. And then Jalen Williams is not really seeing a ton of minutes right now. Moving on to Golden State here. Uh, Steph is questionable. So obviously this is huge news. Hopefully we get it throughout the day and not, we don't have to kind of build around the fact that Steph might be out. Uh, so obviously if Steph is back for some reason, Steph looks like a fantastic spin-up play, and it's a real you know big hit to all these other guys here. I mean, sure, there's still be solid pieces like Clay Thompson, um, you know, even whoever starts between the power forwards and centers, whether it's you know Looney, Sarge, or Kaminga, whoever starts there, they both look really solid. You can take a shot at the guy who comes off the bench. I still think Wiggins is definitely a little bit too cheap, uh, even though he has not been the best recently, and it definitely takes pods out of uh, contention. Now, if there is Steph or no Steph, and obviously once again we're going to want to open Chris Paul. Hasn't really flashed a huge ceiling recently. Not very aggressive at all either. Uh, that game did kind of blow out there against the Thunder that last game. Only eight shots for him, but still 34 in back-to-back -back games. I think we'd want to load up on him. Clay Thompson, we'd want to load up on him. On him. I mean, one of 10. This dude, uh, didn't he come out with a quote saying that he's like, oh, yeah, like, I'm going to step up these next 10 games. One of 10. Like, The dude is nerfed. Clay Thompson is nerfed. But once again, you got to throw this performance out the window. If there's no staff, he's going to shoot the ball close to 20 times. So once again, he'd be a very, very strong play. Uh, you know, Sarge and Looney, whoever starts here, Sarge got the start. Uh, he was off to a terrible start there, but kind of made up for an end. It was Sarge and Kaminga who got the start. They were both really, really solid plays. Kaminga had a really good game there. So I'd have both. Uh, I'd have a ton of interest in both of them. And if Looney comes off the bench or if he starts, as you can see, he's a super productive guy. Didn't get to see a ton of minutes, but should see mid 20s if the game stays close. So I have interest in all three of those guys and loading up on Golden State once again. That's going to be the optimal build of the night if there is no stuff. And then sure, you can get to pods. He was off to a terrible start there. Really helps that the blowout happened. Very, very foul prone, as you can see, which definitely limits his upside. But, I mean, you can de definitely take a shot on him at 4,800. He's been very, very productive. Gary Payton is out, so that definitely you know, helps pods get some more minutes. And I, I do like Moody. as kind of a contrarian uh, value play down here. Played 23 minutes, 3,900. A uh, decent player as well, so... I think you can definitely pivot to him because uh, a lot of people would go to pods there. And then Trace Jackson Javis didn't see enough minutes for me to kind of consider, and that's really it. So that's the slate breakdown for you guys tonight. Uh, kind of finish off this build right here. Obviously, the slate really depends on that, the Golden State news with Steph. So really hoping we get it right now, or excuse me, we get it uh, earlier in the day because otherwise we're going to have to build around the fact that, you know, Steph might be in, and that's very annoying because it's the last game. But, Right now, let's just assume Steph is still out. So if that's the case, see if we can move point guard, point guard. So right now, we're going to have to move Paul to the toady spot. We'll put Anthony Edwards into the shooting guard spot, small forward, 5,900 left over. Do want to get to Bain or Jackson Jr. So I think right now, I'm going to throw... Jaron in that forward spot, um, 8,200. And then small forward. I do like going to Najee Marshall as a value play. We'll throw him in there, kind of rearrange this. It's not perfectly rearranged, but we'll rearrange this real quick here. So we'll throw Najee. We'll get um, 
Jackson Jr., Triple J back in here. And the 5,200 left over for small forward. Let's get to that real quick here. I'm A for now. So that's kind of the early look build. As I said, the huge news right now is that Steph Curry news. It, it does change the whole slate and kind of how you want to attack it. So make sure to stay up to date with me on my Patreon link down below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.